Where's my fan? Where'd I put it? Mambo. Mambo, where'd I just set it? I had it. There's my clack. Okay. It's time for the biggest books there ever was. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Queer Books. <laughs> that you probably don't know about. You might, but you know, I don't see a lot of people talking about these books and I can vouch that these books are good. So I'm gonna share them with you for Pride Month. Hey! Then do that one again. Heck yeah! Good all my fan tricks. Woo! It's also very hot in here, so this is very useful. What do you think about Pride Month? Huh? She's a little bit, we think she's trans. She's been doing mating poses, like how boy birds signal to women that like, hey, come to me. Uh, she's been doing that to her toys. So I think Mambo might be trans. <laughs> if anything, she does love girls. So I was trying to think of a good pun for a son conure. A son con queer. That doesn't work, no. <laughs> so I have a selection of queer books that I don't think get enough love and I think they deserve more love. Some of them are traditional, some of them are indie. One of them might be my me, I don't know. And we'll have to find out. So let's kick it off. Some of these are missing their dust jackets because they go on my rainbow shelves and the dust jackets get stored away safely. But first we have is Icebreaker by Grazietti. I forgot what the first name. A.L. Grazietti. 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 I don't know how to pronounce the name. Uh, this is a gay hockey romance and it's kind of that rivals to lovers story it's very fun and interesting it also talks about depression uh i thought it was very very good time so that's to kick us off i don't have much more to say than another it's gay and it's nice <laughs> another gay book is the darkness outside us by elliot schreffer i believe elliot schreffer and i just heard we're gonna get a sequel but this is also sort of a rivals to lovers thing where these two men are in space on two opposite sides of like this spaceship because they're from different um, what's the delegations so like one's US one's Russian I believe or some kind of coalition like that uh, and they're trying to get to this other planet one of them's sister is there and they're trying to figure it out but something weird keeps happening with the AI it is a trip uh, I did not see that twist coming uh, it's, it's kind of horrific and scary but also very beautiful and I am so stoked that we're getting a sequel because I needed to, when I, I remember reviewing the book and go, I need to know how it, how it goes next. I need to know. And now I get to know, apparently. <laughs> okay, this has various queer folk in this one. We've got Only Mostly Devastated by Sophie Gonzalez. Sophie Gonzalez does write a lot of queer uh, books. This is a Grease retelling. That's fantastic. So the main couple is gay in this one, but there are other side characters of varying orientations. Uh, I remember reading this and I cried a little bit because there is um, a death scene, not a scene, but like someone's family member dies, not a queer youth, um, but it was at a time when I was going through a potential loss of a, an extended family member, so it hit me a little hard, just FYI, but it's beautiful and I loved reading this. Okay, this one is a little complicated. We have The Graces by Laura Eve. This is one of my all-time favorite books, by the way. So we do have side characters that are gay, and we have a main, main character who is likely by. There's two books in this. It's more an established female-female uh, relationship by the end of that, um, but there's fun, interesting things. It's very magical realism-esque with this family. Honestly, this is a good comp title for Humane Society for Creatures and Cryptids, which we're definitely not talking about later. The vibe of it and with these kind of ostracized family who have magic about them and one girl who really wants to kind of understand the magic and wants to get into the magic. So it's very, very interesting. I highly, highly recommend this book. All right, then we have These Witches Don't Burn by Isabel Sterling. This is a lesbian and bisexual main characters uh, who are witches and things happen. We also have um, a variety of different kinds of characters. We have a former 
like relationship that is still healing from that breakup and we have a new love um this is also a duology the second book is this coven won't break um but it's delightful and very spooky it's a good spooky read but thoroughly thoroughly enjoy this one i don't see anyone talking about it then we have the temperature of me and you by brian zepk i believe this is also a gay romance it's a little bit sci-fi kind of stranger things you want a stranger things vibe not like fully Stranger Things, but we have this mysterious newcomer who is just so hot and not in the figurative sense, <laughs> in the very literal sense. Uh, and it's very, very interesting, but it, it has that same vibe of like having to break into a secret lab, uncover the mystery of who this kind of superhero, but are they a superhero is, all while falling in love. And it's adorable and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Next we get Ace Wrap. It's very, very often not shown in a lot of books. I would love to find more Ace books, but this is This Golden Flame by Emily Victoria. It does have a wider queer cast, but the main character herself is Ace and gets to be best friends with this awesome automaton who's so great and I love our automaton. But it is this kind of uh, best friends who go on this journey to escape the oppressive scribe place that they are under uh, and try to save them from you know continuing to be slaves and they go on this wild wild adventure they meet some cool pirates and save the world and it's great it is a standalone fantasy which we don't get a lot of but i don't see more people talking about this and i thought it was fantastic ace representation back into lesbian fantasy we have the sky weaver by kristen citrelli now this is technically the third book uh in the last namsara or iskari is the series the last namsama or some namsara is the first book i do think you should read that first before this one and also the second one which is the the Cage Queen! I'm like, it's Queen something. The Cage Queen, and then this one. But the third one features a lesbian romance, very enemies to lovers lesbian romance, which I thought was very well done. Very interesting characters. We have kind of this, uh, not assassin, but thief that is roped into a very bad organization and our main character is the younger sibling i believe of a character from previous books and is now kind of the general of the guard basically and so it's this kind of cat and mouse situation where and then they end up being thrown together so if that is your vibe then there you go then we have bonds of brass by emily skrutsky this is a gay uh Gaze in space, <laughs> basically. Um, and Oh, I forgot a book. I need to go grab one, but I forgot to grab one. Anyway, um, <laughs> like how Gaze in space reminded me of another Gaze in space book. So this is about two roommates. <laughs> roommates. It is discovered one of them is the crown prince of an oppressive em empire and the other is uh, one of the oppressed, basically. But uh, word gets out that this character is actually the prince and they have to book it and get out because assassination attempts ensue. They don't know who to trust. They crash land on this other planet. They kind of pick up uh, a young, very feisty, random girl who loves blowing things up and she's my favorite character. Um, <laughs> but it is the start of a trilogy. Uh, it's very fast paced, very quick read. And uh, the cliff, there is a really bad cliffhanger in this, I will say. It's kind of a heartbreaking cliffhanger. So be warned, it's not like a death, but it's like, oh guys, why did it have to be this difficult? And I'm very scared that the second book is gonna be even rougher, but I own it. I'm gonna read it. Sorry, it's really hot in here, if you can't tell. I forgot the other book. We have to go get the other book. I was reminded of my other gaze in space, and that's The Disasters by M.K. England. There's also Spell Hacker by M.K. England. Both are fantastic. Both are just a full queer cast. So this is basically gay disasters who have all flunked out of this space academy, but then there is an attack on the school, and they're kind of the only ones left, and it's up to them to figure out who done it and how to save the rest of the remaining people at that school. It is a wild time. It's very queer. There's, it's, it's a lot of different identities. Spell hacker as well. Um, the, one of the love interests in that is non-binary. We have just, 
everybody in this highly recommend the disasters back to gay romance we have conventionally yours by annabeth albert we also have a sequel out of character i love this this actually had really great representation for you know nerdy stuff and also for um autism so the main one of the main characters is autistic and i thought it was a decent representation uh, granted other people can say otherwise for that but I thought it was very very well done and it is a rivals to lovers as well it's these two rivals to lovers that go on a road trip to this big gaming convention thing where they're playing a very similar game to like Magic the Gathering and they're the top top ones in their team at home and it's it's a fun road trip time as you can see I have tabbed this one because there's a lot of fun moments that I like to go back to now, the content of this book is not necessarily gay um, it is a hetero romance in it but it is written by a trans author I just need to read more by this author um, and that is all the birds in the sky by Charlie Jane Anders uh, Charlie Jane Anders has written a lot of short stories as well um, and then and there's a couple other books by her that uh, personally, I don't really like all that much. They're a lot gayer though, but we have The City in the Middle of the Night. I was very angry at that book. I did not like how that book went down, but it does have a lesbian uh, relationship in it. This one does not, um, but it is very well written and probably her most famous works, you probably, this is one of the ones that I'm like, you might have heard of this one before, but it is a mad scientist and a witch situation. They're rivals, they're, they're best friends. They grew up best friends and then later in life, they're on these opposing sides of things and it's very, very good, interesting times, um, but yay, trans authors, woo. And another for a uh, kind of lesbian romance, but the romance is not at the forefront of this. We have The Library of the Unwritten by A.J. Hackwith. This is a story about a librarian of hell and unwritten stories, the stories that are unfinished, they live in this little library of hell and it is the librarian's job to keep them there and keep the characters from manifesting and someone gets out and chaos ensues. So uh, the main character is lesbian though, uh, but there's definitely, the romance is very, very backdrop to this. It is a lot more about going through hell trying to fix things and it is it is chaos. It's a chaotic time. Now it's time for the indies. We are in the indie section of this. First up we're going to have another asexual story in space and that is Surviving Daybreak by Kendra Merritt. This is a duology. Uh, we have Surviving Daybreak and Daybreak Sentinel and our main character is asexual and going through it. <laughs> she is uh, on a ship to go uh, be on this other planet called Daybreak but things happen her ship just gets demolished there's a lot of escape pods she makes it down to the surface no one else does and now she is stuck with a broken arm <laughs> trying to survive this very alien world and it's intense and so fun i highly highly recommend this if you love kind of you know solo in space if you're into like the martian or something but there is no hope of going home in this it's great the sequel is even better um i absolutely love this and you know me i've talked about kendra Mara a lot i love all her stuff um mostly i've talked about her fairy tale romances which i don't recall a queer one yet in there but this is her first asexual story and as an ace this was great i am not an arrow ace like um Annika is, but still very, very visible. <laughs> and who wants a full queer cast of characters in a military dystopian sci-fi? Well, that is The Hands Were Given by O.E. Tierman. I know I've talked about this book before. This is a completely queer cast. It's like the queer squad in this rebellion. <laughs> uh, the commander is a trans man who falls in love with the gay... <sighs> What's the term? He like acquires things. It's not acquisitions or something in the in the military, but he has that position anyway. Um, there's ev everybody is here. Everyone in the umbrella is pretty much here. <laughs> uh, it's it's hard to think of a character that's not in the umbrella. Maybe there's no intersex character, but there's three more books I haven't read in this series, and new characters are coming all the time. So 
yeah, <laughs> like, highly recommend this. I love this so much. It does get spicy, so if you're more of a spicy breeder, this has a lot of spicy, spicy stuff, um, but it also has a lot of heart-wrenching stuff. No one is safe in this series. I wanted to cry in the, I think the third book is where one of my favorite characters was unfortunately unalived, but this book. Okay, so who's ready for uber gay but the most beautiful prose you've ever read? We have Angels Before Man by Raphael Nicholas. Now this one, some people may have heard of. It's pretty popular, at least in the indie world. Um, this is a gay retelling of the fall of Satan. Do I need to say any more? I don't think so, but I will because it's beautiful. <laughs> it's so good. It had no right. When I was first reading this, it was recommended by a friend of mine and he said, you have to read this book. And I'm like, okay, you know, I'm not really into the super spice. This is not super spice, I would say. Uh, it has some spicy moments, but it's more prose than anything. And it's so gorgeous. I was just reading it like jaw on the floor upset at how beautiful this book is. So if you want some absolutely beautiful prose, a good examination of like biblical figures and the story of creation and stuff, like I'm not a religious person, but I grew up knowing a lot, you know, being, you know, forced into church and stuff. And uh, I can say like, this makes, this just makes the story so much more interesting. Uh, there are plentiful supply of content warnings that are listed, uh, I believe in the front as well. Uh, yeah, so there's a bunch listed here, um, but I would say that nothing is really shown graphically for those things because the prose is so beautiful. <laughs> so it still shows them, it still has these things happen, but in a way that I think is not so in your face. Yeah. Another book that doesn't feature your queer characters as of yet, it might later in the series, I'm not sure because I'm still reading the series, but a trans author and that is Brady Von Althus and the Pesky Pest Controller uh, by Tycho Dwellis. You guys know my friend Tycho usually, he sometimes has been streaming with me. He's written several books, I just grabbed the Brady because I'm currently in the middle of reading the Brady series. Uh, we also have One Pale Reflection, King of Dust, which is queer. That book is very queer. I don't have my fancy copy yet, that's coming soon because the Kickstarter was successful, and also Court of Snakes, which is on the shelf somewhere. I think it's over there. Yes, there. Um, <laughs> and that one features an ace protagonist, so, which I just haven't gotten to it yet. I'm gonna get to it, I promise I will. Um, but Tycho is fantastic and has really fun, easily digestible reads. Like you can read these in a couple hours. I remember reading this one sitting in the airport waiting for my plane. I finished it before I got on the plane. So, very quick little nuggets of delightfulness, and this is kind of a Adams Family-esque style story. Very normal child with a very abnormal family, and it's a wild ride. Back to Super Smutty, we have Mercy by Ian Haramaki. I just got my fancy copy today. Look at the fancy copy. Ooh, it's so pretty. Ooh, I have a little focus even on it. Ah. So I now have two copies of Mercy. Um, but I'm excited because this is, you know, first edition. This is a fancy edition. Uh, Mercy is about a priest who is very much uh, a pariah in his small Russian town. And he is sent off to the woods because there is a beast that's just eating everybody up. And his town is like, you got to fix this problem. And he's thinking he's just going to go to his death, basically. But uses some healing magic and saves the beast. The beast then turns into a man who is not just a man, uh, as you can probably guess what he probably is <laughs> uh, by, the, by the cover there. Um, it's beautiful. It is very smutty, I will say. It gets, it gets very smutty. Um, but it's a lot more about processing trauma, about accepting yourself, learning to love and be loved, and solving mysteries and, uh, it, you know, saying F you to corrupt people of power. So it's great. There you go. Next up, we're back to the lesbians. We have Echo of the Evercry by E.J. Dawson. Um, this is an enemy, no rivals, I will say rivals to lover's story about a girl who is forced to go on this big journey holding this fancy, fancy doohickey here, uh, but with her main rival and slowly they, you know, come to have a feeling for each other. Uh, but it's very well written, very interesting uh, story. It's kind of like they're nuns, but like, you know, fantasy nuns uh, trying to figure out the mystery of 
what's going on and living up to parent parental expectations uh, it's very very good highly recommend next up we have city of mages by kirsten michelle and aj cerna this is a dual pov story but the dual povs are not the romance there is a lesbian romance in this um but it's an established one from one of the main characters and there's kind of like a reunion for them this is about again two opposing sides one who is uh, kind of ingrained, not in magic police, but the oppressors really, and then these free people who are kidnapped. One of them is kidnapped and brought and meant to be kind of brainwashed into servitude, but she breaks out. The other one follows to try to bring her back and then ends up going to the free people's you know, placed in the trees. They live in the trees, which I always think is really, really cool. And discovering, you know, they were in the wrong, that the people that they serve are the bad guys. Um, so it's got that kind of journey to realizing your own faults. Sideline story, I am anxiously waiting for the sequel for this though, I will say. There's a bit of a cliffhanger. There's potential for other romances in this. This book does not focus on the romance. It is more about friendship and learning to overcome one's like uh, systemic learned behaviors and opinions, which is a really great take, especially in today's climate. All the gays. All of them are in this. We have The Gay Teen's Guide to Defeating a Siren by Cody Wagner. This is book one in a trilogy. And our main character is sent to, to a Pray Away the Gay camp. But lo and behold, the Pray Away the Gay camp is actually, no, we're going to save you guys. You guys are okay. You're safe here. Being gay is great. And we love you for who you are. We're here to protect you. And that's really fantastic. Like if, if there ever was going to be one of those camps, it would be the best one is this one um, because... It's not actually praying away the gay, it's praying away your awful parents and taking care of you and giving you a support system that you actually need. But there's paranormal activity happening. There's a siren who is bewitching people to be bigoted asshats. Uh, and one of our, our main character is not the chosen one, but he becomes friends with the chosen one and uh, of the, the seeker who is able to identify those affected by the siren. And things happen. This book made me cry because there is a character who is a, my favorite character in this book that does unfortunately meet his untimely end and that is not okay and I'm very mad at you Cody Wagner um, but there's potential for the rest of the series. I'm very anxious and scared to read it because if you can tear my house out that easily Sir, what else can you do? But it's great found family. Everyone's gay because it's at a pray away the gay camp. So it's, it's fantastic. And lastly, I don't like to do this, but I'm gonna do it. It's my book, The Humane Society of a Creatures and Corrupters. Yay. Uh, that's one of my books. My other books are also very gay, but I thought I'd just talk about one. Um, <laughs> so this one has uh, a lesbian relationship in this. And we have our three sisters and the new girl in town, the youngest sister, Talia, is, uh, <laughs> She's like, she owns up to the stereotype of being a gay witch uh, and they're in this town that just hates them and wants them gone while they're holding the secret of having all these magical creatures in their own house that they're taking care of like Bigfoot and all these fun little guys on the cover here. Um, there are illustrations throughout the book. Uh, so every single chapter begins, look there's Strieg. He's an asshole, we love him. We have a lot of fun characters, uh, so you can learn about them. But uh, Talia falls head over heels in love with Asha, the new girl in town, who is like, why are people such a-holes to you? Like, that doesn't make sense to me, you seem pretty cool. And learns the secret, gets involved as new acquisitions are coming in and people come into the sisters' lives that may not be as honest as they could be about their intentions. Uh, things ensue. I'm really proud of it. It is in Spiffo right now, so it would be awesome if you picked it up, read it, and gave it a review. That'd be awesome. I'm gonna stop talking about it now. Sequel is also gayer. <laughs> Where we started low with just one gay couple, and then the second book is like, here's all the gay coming. Not soon. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm still working on the Bibli for that one. Okay! Well, these are the books that I don't think get talked enough and a lot uh, on the booktube sphere, and y'all should check them out. 
We can talk for days about red, white, and royal blue, and Heartstopper and stuff, um, you know, Rainbow Rowell, Carry On, we can talk a lot about those, but they get enough screen time, I think. We need to give, give love to these ones that don't get talked about enough and are excellent and deserve to be talked about, okay? So that's it. What other gay books do you think I need to pick up? I do have a ton on the shelves that I have not picked up yet. But let me know down in the comments what I should be doing. You can add them to my viewer pool as well. And you can also commission me to read said books immediately on my TBR. But please save it for July because my June TBR, if you recall, is really, really, really awful and has a lot. But I've read a lot of gay books already, so there's that. All right, I'm gonna go now. I'll see you next time, cuties. Bye! tricks flag tricks <laughs> yeah okay i'll stop i'll stop with the bad puns gosh oh. right on the hand back to just straight up gaze <laughs> straight up gaze that's not a phrase you should use we were so close to getting this video done but then the battery died